Today we're going to learn about depth of field. It's an important concept of all photography, but it's absolutely crucial in photojournalism to not just understand depth of field, but to be able to use it in the real world. Let's start with the definition of depth of field. In photography, depth of field is the distance between the nearest and farthest objects that are in acceptably sharp focus in an image taken with a camera. In photojournalism, since we can't manipulate the subjects of our images, sometimes the only way to control what the viewer looks at in an image is by making the background or foreground out of focus so that the viewer's eye concentrates its attention on the subject in focus that the photographer wants them to view. In the image in this slide of the police chief standing in front of two other subjects, I wanted the focus to be on him. But I also wanted people to be able to see the expressions on the two subjects behind him, while making them slightly out of focus so that the concentration would still be on the chief of police in the foreground. By knowing how to control depth of field with my camera, I was able to accomplish exactly what I wanted with this image. Next, we'll look at how we describe depth of field and how to talk about it when we're discussing photography. So when we talk about depth of field in an image, we talk about it having more or less depth of field. We'll start with what we call a wide or deep depth of field. When an image has a wide depth of field, if there is a focal point in the center of the frame, a foreground and a background, almost all, if not all of the image will be in acceptably sharp focus. A medium depth of field will have the focal point in focus and some of the image will be slightly out of focus. In this case, the background and the foreground, the house and the flowers in the front, have been slightly blurred to mimic a medium depth of field. One thing you should notice between this image and the last is that the focal point of the tree now becomes a little bit more prominent in the image. And last, we have what we call a shallow or a narrow depth of field. In this case, both the background and the foreground are very out of focus. This allows the eye to focus solely on the tree, which is the focal point of the image. When we talk about depth of field, there are three main factors that influence that. The first is aperture. We've learned about aperture when we talked about exposure in camera basics. That's the iris, that's the opening in the lens that lets in the amount of light. As you change the aperture, you change the way the light is focused onto the sensor in your camera. And that change impacts the depth of field. Next, we have the focal length. Focal length is the distance in millimeters from the end of the lens to where the light waves cross and come into sharp focus in a camera that would be on your sensor. As you increase and decrease the focal length of the lens, you would change the depth of field in your image. And last is the distance to subject. That's the distance from the end of the lens to the subject you're focusing on. As you increase or decrease the distance between the end of the lens and the subject you're focusing on, you will also affect the depth of field. Next, we'll look at each of the three factors individually and see how they specifically impact the depth of field in our images. Starting with the aperture. In relation to depth of field, as you increase the aperture, you decrease the depth of field. Remember that as we increase the aperture, the number gets smaller. So a small aperture like f16, as you see on the left, has a wider depth of field than f2.8, as you see on the right, which has a very shallow depth of field. On the right, underneath the F16 icon, you'll notice a scale. That's wide on the left for a wide depth of field, and on the right, we have an S for shallow depth of field. To help you visualize, we'll start with F16. F16, which again, has a wide depth of field. The foreground is in focus. The tree that's the focal point is in focus, and the houses in the background are in focus. Now, as we increase our aperture, again, as we make the number smaller, as we go from F16 to F8, we begin to decrease the amount of depth of field. So now the houses in the background become slightly out of focus and the flowers in the foreground become slightly out of focus. As we continue to increase our aperture, let's say another two stops to f.4, we further decrease the depth of field. So you can now see our houses in the background are much more out of focus and the flowers in the foreground are much more out of focus than they were in the previous image. When it comes to depth of field, as we increase our aperture, we decrease our depth of field. So we go from a wide depth of field to a shallow depth of field. Now that we've seen a visualization of how our aperture impacts our depth of field, we'll take a look at how focal length impacts our depth of field. The focal length is the millimeter of the lens. So if I have a wide angle lens, like a 17 millimeter on the left, I have more depth of field. 
as I zoom or as I change to larger lenses and move from let's say 35 millimeter to 70 millimeter to 150 millimeters, every time I increase the focal length of the lens, I decrease the depth of field. Let's take a look at how that works with some visualizations similar to how we did it with aperture. So on a focal length, if I start with a wide angle lens, 17 millimeter for example, I'll have a wide depth of field. I'll have my background in focus, my focal point will be in focus, and my foreground will be in focus. Now as I increase the focal length of the lens to let's say 70 millimeters, I decrease the depth of field. I start to move towards a shallow depth of field. My focal point of the large tree will remain in focus, my background will start to blur, and my foreground will start to blur. As I continue to increase the focal length of the lens, let's say to a telephoto like 300, I continue to make a much more shallow depth of field, right? So my depth of field continues to decrease as I increase the millimeter of my lens. Now the tree is probably the only thing in focus. The background is much more blurry than it was previously, and so is the foreground. So remember, as we increase the focal length of the lens, or as the millimeter size of the lens gets larger, we will decrease our depth of field. We will go from a wide depth of field to a shallow depth of field. Now that we've visualized how focal length impacts our depth of field, let's look at our final factor, which is our distance. And that distance refers to the distance from the camera lens to the subject we're focusing on. So if we look at our depth of field scale on the bottom, the more distance I have between my camera lens and the subject I'm focusing on, the more depth of field I have. Now as I get closer to a subject, move physically closer to a subject, not just zoom with the lens, I decrease the depth of field in my image. So like our other two factors, let's visualize distance. Our focus point is again the tree. And if I'm at a 10 foot distance and I focus on the tree, my foreground, the flowers are gonna be in focus, the houses in the background will be in focus, and I will have a wide depth of field. Now as I decrease that distance, as I move closer to that focus point, but because this is a graphic, you will not see a distance change. I will not get closer to the tree. As we decrease the distance, so I move from 10 feet to 5 feet, I now start to get a more shallow depth of field. So my foreground slightly blurs, my background slightly blurs. And as I get even closer, I'll get a much shallower depth of field. So now that we've taken a look at and visualized the three factors that influence depth of field, let's go back to that original image we saw on the first slide, and let's break it down and look at the three factors and how they influenced how the image was made. I'd like to quickly explain that the person in the foreground was the chief of police of Eureka at the time, and he had only been the chief of police for three or four days before a very high profile homicide occurred. The two people in the background are members of the church where the homicide occurred. On the left is Frank Yeager. At the time, Frank was the Humboldt County coroner. He was also a former mayor. He was known in the community. The person in the background on the right is Mike Newman. He's active in the business community in clubs like Rotary and the Chamber of Commerce. Both of the two in the background attended the church where the homicide occurred, were close friends with the priest that was killed, and were known by the people in the community that knew them to be devout members of their Catholic faith. In this image, I wanted the attention to focus on the chief of police, but I did want those two people in the background to be noticeable. The chief of police is about to announce that there has been, in fact, a homicide at the church. Now, it's important to note that this was actually at a press conference. So the first factor that I'd like to talk about is distance. They called for a press conference, and the public was allowed to attend. This was in the street in front of the church. The press lined up. My distance was fixed. Once we kind of set up where all the press were going to be, I couldn't change the distance. So I couldn't use that to influence my depth of field. My next factor was my focal length. In the background, you can see what looks like a house. It's a little out of focus, but directly above the chief of police's head from where I was standing, there was a big black awning that kind of looked like a faraway hat. I decided to crop that out. So I zoomed into 60 millimeters. That set part of my depth of field. And the last factor is I set my aperture to f4. All three of these settings gave me a fairly but not too shallow depth of field. I wanted you to still be able to see, and if you were from the community, know who the two people were standing behind Andy Mills, but I really wanted the focus to be on him. 
The depth of field in this photo is no accident. I actually used something called depth of field preview where I push a button on my camera that activates the aperture in my lens so that I can see exactly how much of my image will be in focus and how much will be out of focus. On the Canon cameras we have for you to check out, that button is located on the left side of the camera body underneath the larger lens release button. Pushing that button will actually activate the aperture in the camera. When you look through the viewfinder normally, the aperture is completely open to allow the most light in so that you can see and focus on your subjects. Pushing that button will actually activate the aperture while you're looking through the lens and allow you to see the change in depth of field. You can try this out by setting your camera to f16 and pushing the button and then changing it up to the maximum aperture, which depending on what zoom settings you're on will be 3.5 to 5.6 on the cannons that we check out to you. This function allows you to preview the depth of field and see exactly what you're going to get. And it's a great way to learn and understand how depth of field works in the real world. Let's do a quick review of our three factors and how they impact depth of field. Our aperture, which as we increase our aperture decreases our depth of field. Our focal length of our lens, which as we increase our focal length we decrease our depth of field. And our distance to subject, where when we decrease our distance between the camera and the subject we focus on, we decrease our depth of field. Hopefully you now have a basic understanding of how depth of field works and how photojournalists use it in the field to control what our viewers look at. By using depth of field to make certain areas out of focus in an image, we can concentrate the viewer's attention to a specific focus point in our images.